Hey, what's up family? Welcome to Boardroom Talk. This is another edition where we are suffocating all the lies that are centered around your financial life. Listen, my role and responsibility as a leader and a pillar in the faith community, particularly for those of you that are a part of the faith community, you believe in God, uh, your life is faith based and you want to live in the next level, not just spiritually or socially. You want to live in the next level economically. And what better way to receive the teaching, the training, the implementation that you need than from someone who is not only in the faith community, but who actually knows what they're talking about. Because see, on one side, people will say uh, preachers and leaders need to stay in their own lane and preach and teach the Bible and talk about God and all these spiritual or social things that we want to do for the community. So as long as we quote in scriptures, as long as we talking about what we want to do for the community in terms of giving away free food and passing out gas cards, then we in our lane. But the moment we start talking about money, we get all this heat from people outside of the faith community. And the truth is we get heat from people in the faith community. And then when we do talk about money, if it's just limited to tithes and offerings, we're actually doing a disservice to the people who want to live financially in the next level. So when there are strategies that we do have, especially from people who are leaders and pillars in the faith community, we have to embrace it. We've got to receive it and we've got to implement it in our lives. We have a course right now available on RamonePrestonUniversity.com, which by the way, if you don't know is the number one platform for ministry and marketplace training. This is a part of my legacy. It's a part of my mission and the role and responsibility that I have, particularly in the faith community, to make it easy for you to not only know about God, to know about what your role is in your community, but to know what your role and responsibility is financially for yourself, for your family, for your church, for your community, and for the world. But right now we have a course on Ramon Preston University entitled the ABCs of financial literacy. It is a great course. It's full of so many amazing models. And again, if you're not wealthy, if you ain't filthy rich, then what I'm sharing with you is absolutely needed and it's necessary to help you get to your financial level. And if for some reason you are rich or wealthy, then you need to reach out to me and show me and my family and friends how you've made it there so we can get there. Listen, each one should reach one, right? Okay. Well, when you reach one, you should teach one, which is why I don't want to be comfortable. I don't want to be rich. I want to be wealthy and I'm not making no excuses for wanting to be wealthy, not just financially, but I want to be wealthy spiritually. I want to be wealthy physically. I want to be wealthy emotionally and mentally, but I ain't finna rule out the type of wealth I want to have financially. And I'm not going to wait until I get there to share this information with you. Because if I don't share this type of information that I know, then on one hand, you have a group of people say, oh, you don't want to share with nobody. You don't want to show nobody no love. You don't want to be the plug to help other people get to where you are. But then when I share it, oh, he shouldn't be talking about money and finances and economics and real estate and entrepreneurship. Somebody got to tell somebody what they can do in the faith community to get to the next level. I don't want us to be so heavenly bound that we're earthly no good. So once this video ends, I want you to click the link. And if you haven't already, I want you to sign up for our course entitled the ABCs of financial literacy. Listen, we've got a summer special going on $39 and 99 cents. Literally for one course, you can afford to invest $39 and 99 cents into yourself for an entire course. That's going to teach you the ABCs of financial literacy. What are the ABCs? Well, the A equals accounting. I show you seven components of accounting that everybody should know. You shouldn't trust all of the banks and institutions and professionals and experts to run your money like you should trust yourself to run your money. But most people don't trust themselves to run their money because they don't know the ABCs of financial literacy. So the A equals accounting. The B is what we're going to talk about today, balance sheet. And then C is cash flow. When you understand the ABCs of financial literacy, you ain't going to make, and I say this respectfully, illiterate decisions. And I am the poster child, the guinea pig for making stupid decisions financially. I had to learn the long way. We used to sing a song in the old school church. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. I came up that mountain financially. I done fell down that mountain, went up that mountain again countless times. And I want to make sure that as a leader and pillar in the faith community, you don't have to perpetuate the same cycle. The ABCs of financial literacy, 
$39.99 for the entire course. When you click the link, you will see all the modules that's available. We've already talked about accounting. We've talked a little bit about cash flow and I'll talk about that in some later sessions. But today I want to talk about balance sheet because you should know your own balance sheet. Now there are two balance sheets you're going to have. One is going to be for your personal finances. That's for what you got coming in, what you got going out, what your financial life is made up of personally. And your other one is going to be professionally. Now you may say, well, guess what? I don't have a business. I don't have a ministry. I don't have an organization where well, you should have some ideas on what your professional balance sheet would look like if at some point you do entertain a professional financial life. Now, why do you say you should even entertain? Well, because if you have enough personal finances coming in after your expenses and you have cash flow C left that's remaining, you want to know how you can take that money and put it in a professional system that can accelerate you and bring you to a greater place of financial stability. So your balance sheet should be personal, and your balance sheet should be professional. Now, the balance sheet is made up of three important components. I won't get into all the details because I want you to pick up the course and take your time, which by the way, this whole entire course is video based. So you can uh, participate in it uh, whenever you want to, 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any place in the world, from your phone, your tablet, any other device that you're using. It is a video based training platform. It's so simple. You ain't got to sit in no classroom. You ain't got to do no paperwork. All you have to do is just take the time and let me personally, who's facilitating these courses and each module in this course, teach you and train you to show you what you need to know and not just know, but what you need to know to implement, to take the strategies and see them manifest in your life. So your balance sheet is made up of three components. Let me give it to you real quick so you'll know what a balance sheet is. Now remember, your balance sheet should be personal and your balance sheet should be professional. So in your personal life and your professional life, your balance sheet should be made up of assets, liabilities, and then what we call net worth. Everybody, it doesn't matter how broke, how busted, how rich or wealthy you are, everybody has a balance sheet, whether you are aware of it or not, whether you are knowledgeable of it or not, whether you participate in it or not, you have a balance sheet. Your financial life is made up of assets, your financial life is made up of liabilities and your financial life is made up of a net worth. Whether you don't have any assets, whether you got too many liabilities and whether you don't even have a clue if you have a net worth, you still have a balance sheet. So let's look at each of these three components very quickly so you can see how they work and how they make up your balance sheet. I'm going to give you a simple working definition for what assets are. Assets are things that flow money to you. This is real simple. Do you have any assets in your life? I don't know. You need to check and see if you got things that flow money to you. Now, there are a lot of people who misdiagnose assets for liabilities and liabilities for assets. They just confuse because they don't know the ABCs of financial literacy. And trust me, just because you don't read rich dad, po dad, or some financial book does not mean it is applicable in your life. Most people who read books, which means they got a lot of information, they have read a lot of words, don't really understand financial literacy because they think financial literacy is about information. The truth is financial literacy is about numbers. It's about dollars. It's about metrics. It's about math. So if there's no numerical financial metrics or math behind your balance sheet, you really don't understand the B of the ABCs in financial literacy. So the first component in your balance sheet are assets. These are things that flow money to you. Now, some may say, well, my house is an asset. Is it? Some may say, uh, my Rolex watch is an asset. Is it? Some may say, my Nikes, because they worth a lot, are assets. Are they? 
Well, you have to look at what assets are, things that flow money to you. The key word is flow. Now, is that house worth something in a good market? Of course, you may have equity in it. Is that Rolex worth something in a certain market? Perhaps it has equity in it and it has some value to it. Are those Nikes worth something in certain markets? Perhaps they are, but on a daily, weekly, monthly, regular basis, is the house, is the Rolex, is the Nike, is anything else that you have flowing money to you? This is where we get misunderstood at because we think assets are things that have the potential to make us money. Uh uh. I had the same mistakes made in my life thinking there are some items that I had. I had a car with a title that it was paid for, but it's just sitting in my yard. It ain't flowing no money to me. It has the potential to make me money, but what type of asset is it that's flowing money to me? Because what happens when the automobile market goes down and my car goes to zero? What happens if the jewelry market goes down and my Rolex goes to zero? What happens when the housing market crashes and now I'm upside down in my mortgage and the $50,000 worth of equity I had in a good market, I no longer have. Well, my asset now becomes a liability. So the first component in your balance sheets is assets or are assets. These are things that flow money to you. So you have to take inventory of everything tangible, okay, tangible, and intangible, that's very important. You have to take inventory of everything, tangible and intangible. What do you mean tangible? Things, stuff, things that I have. What do you mean intangible? Ideas, strategies, wisdom, education, training, like this training. You have to look at the assets that you have and see which things that I have at my disposal, what, what do I have in my mind, what do I have in my life that are tangible and intangible that are actually flowing, flowing. I'm not talking about potential here. I'm talking about flowing money to me. If they're not flowing money to me, I need to get them out of my asset column because I'm misunderstanding the first component of my balance sheet.